Welcome back everyone, this is Weird William, and today I'd like to show you version 3 of my automatic villager trading hall and sorter for Minecraft 1.14.3. Now in the point .3 pre-release, villager trading halls are finally working again, hooray! So this design is actually very similar to my version 1, where you're adding one villager at a time to pair them off with one workstation at a time. They hit an activator rail over an empty cell only, and within a few moments they fall down into that cell and you can get a workstation of your choice to assign them a profession of your choice. And as long as they stay a novice rank in that profession, you can rapidly cycle through their novice trades. So each time you break the workstation in front of them, you're re-randomizing their trades. So for a librarian, for example, we keep getting no books, but eventually we'll get a book trade, piercing three, and we can keep going like this for a librarian or for any other profession until we get exactly the kind of novice trades that we like. Let's say we want to keep Curse of Vanishing. For a farmer, for example, you could do vegetable trades until you get the vegetable trades that you like. And so this works really well. There's not a big need to get rid of a lot of villagers like you did before. No mass murder is required. So I will show you how to build this. I'll show you how it works. And I'll also go over some of the new 1.14.3 villager mechanics now that have changed yet again. And hopefully we'll stick around for the long haul with this new release and they'll stay how they are because this release so far for villagers is looking great. So stick around. First I'd like to start with a quick recap of villager mechanics in 1.14 as they relate to trading halls and villager professions. And so now in 1.14 we have 13 professions including the new mason and for a villager to take up a profession it has to bond to the associated workstation. And so each different profession has a different workstation and villagers will need to bond one villager to one workstation and it needs to be able to get up adjacent to that workstation at certain times of the day in order to unlock any trades that you may have locked out by trading with them. And so I'm just listing all of the different ones over here that you can refer to, you know, just for your information. And then of course nitwits, we kind of send them upstate to the farm because they can never take up a profession, can never offer any trades, they have that kind of green coat, and we really don't need them if we come across them. Let's also talk about times of day. Now at time zero, this is early morning, and that is when villagers wake up and get out of bed, and from time zero to time 2000, which is about mid-morning over here, villagers will gossip. And so they'll gather together, they'll talk about, you know, if you've hit them, and then that'll increase their trade prices and other topics. This doesn't seem to affect iron golem spawning anymore, which is interesting. So that's another topic I won't really get into. Uh, but from time 2000 to time 9000, this is their work day, their kind of work hours. And it is during this window when you can actually go through that rapid cycling of their trades as a novice that I showed you earlier in the video. And so this is when you want to do all of your villagers sorting. Usually at time 2000 and time 6000, they'll be unlocking their trades, but it can happen at other points within the work day. Time 6000 is noon and time 9000 is kind of mid-afternoon over here you can see the sun. And then from time 9000 to time 12000 they will also have another round of gossip and then at time 12000 the sun is going down and they will seek out their beds and lie down in their beds to sleep for the night. So let's go on and talk about villager pathfinding and how that has been changed a little bit in 1.14.3. Now, villager pathfinding has been really a moving target in 1.14. So far, they've been changing it over and over. And in the point .3 pre-release now, they've kind of set it up so it's a hybrid of the earlier versions. And they've kept, I think, all of the best parts and gotten rid of the weird stuff. And so overall, I would say pathfinding now is more forgiving in terms of having villagers be able to pick up a workstation. And it's also more reliable and controllable. So really, it's working great for trading halls. Um, one thing I'll point out first is that a, a layer of double carpet is actually a good way to prevent pathfinding. And so I actually have that in front of my trading hall over there just as a precaution. It not only will keep a villager inside and unable to detect a workstation outside of the carpet, but it will also keep things like zombies that might get into your trading hall from being able to access your villagers. Um, they just can't cross that double carpet line. And the one weird exception with pathfinding so far that I've found is that even if a villager's pathfinding is completely restricted, they will be able to bond to a workstation within two blocks of their location if that workstation is to the south or the east of them within two blocks. And so that's pretty weird. Um, I don't know if, that, if that's a bug they're going to change. So this guy is totally blocked out. But like you can see, he can pathfind to the south and the east. But if I do it to the north or the west, I've never seen them be able to pick it up. 
So that's something to be mindful of for now, at least in this pre-release. And then again, we have villagers. If I put one here in 1.14.1 and 0.2, this would effectively block pathfinding. But now it's more forgiving and you can set it up so that a villager will be able to be cycling through their profession trades for you in this kind of cell. And the only thing you have to be mindful of is that if you are more than five away from the villager, then they won't be able to detect that you've destroyed that workstation. They'll think it's still there as kind of a ghost workstation. And once they get within five blocks of it, they'll say, oh, I guess I'm not employed anymore because that workstation is gone. Let's get rid of that guy. Now over here, just as a kind of contrast to that, I've blocked them with half slabs, their vision a little bit, and so he won't be able to pick up a workstation because he doesn't feel that he can pathfind to it. Again, with the exception of putting it to the north or the south, and they will, or sorry, to the south or the east, and then they will be able to pick it up. So just something to be mindful of. Now I want to talk about punching villagers. Now, it used to be, I'm pretty sure, that if you punched a villager, that was it. They hated you so much, just one little punch, all their trade prices would go way up. Now, if you punch a villager, so it's 24, if I punch him, now it's 26, if I punch him again, it's 27, it seems to go up just one or two in cost and it keeps going up you know uh, related to how much I'm punching him and so it's a little bit more forgiving if you punch one by accident while you're moving them around the trade price isn't gonna go up that much but what you do need to be mindful of now with the iron golem summoning changes is that all it takes is three distressed villagers at any time of day to summon an iron golem so if I start punching three in a row over here they're close enough to each other, they're all distressed, they're trying to run away from me, they're scared. If I keep going, there's an iron golem. They just summon that guy. If I were in survival mode, he would be immediately hostile and lay the smack down. And so if you punch villagers in your hall too much, especially three of them, you are going to get smacked back in return. Hard. So be mindful of that and watch out. Uh, I think that's enough about the villager mechanics now, so let's move on and I'll show you how to build this trading hall. The key feature of my trading hall design is that you have this row of activator rails with an activator rail above each cell such that a villager will be on a pressure plate down there when he's in the cell and turn off the activator rail, making carts not able to deposit any more villagers into that cell. Now if there's no villager in the cell, then the activator rail will be on and any incoming villager will pop off onto that empty cell until they're all full. And so the way I've set this up, if we look over here, is we have the double layer of carpets here, we have maybe a workstation right here that we put in after the villager arrives. And so as the villager comes in, he pops off off the activator rail, he gets stuck in the glass, which is a transparent block and doesn't suffocate it, and will only be able to move forward and fall down into the cell. This will push the pressure plate, it will turn off this torch, turn on this torch, turn off that torch, and turn off the activator rail, making any new villagers coming by not be deposited off here but rather in some other empty cell. And so to set this up, we just need to basically tile this and put some walls in between, and we're all set. And then I'll also show you how to make the automatic cart return system, where the cart, once it deposits a villager, will return right back in, hit a cactus, fall in the dispenser, and be ready for you to push a button again that will dispense the cart and pick up a new villager from your holding cell. I'm not going to talk about how to build a villager breeder. Um, there's a lot of good designs out there. I'll leave that to you. But once you have an output of baby villagers, you can have them be collected here. This will only work for adult villagers, not babies. You have to be mindful of that. The babies will just, you know, be deposited here and they can just run right out and fall and run around willy nilly. And you don't want that. Um, so, yeah, I'll show you how to build the hall and how to build this uh, holding cell and the cart return system and the automatic system to send villagers on through. So let's get started with that. For this tutorial, I'm going to make a trading hall that is four cells wide. You can obviously make it as wide as you like, as many cells as you like, and you could make it wrap around a U-shape, you know, in your hall, however you like. But for now, let's just do four cells. So we're going to start out making a row like this for the double carpet, and then we're going to go back two and punch out one more block back there, every other block. Okay, and then we're going to put that double carpet in, in the front. Again, this double carpet is good because it keeps the villagers in, it minimizes any accidental pathfinding, and it also protects the villagers from any zombies that would try to cross, they can't cross. 
Now let's put some stone pressure plates over here. The villagers will be standing on the stone pressure plate and the workstation will be here between the carpet and the pressure plate. Let's come back over here and put redstone torches on the side of that block that their pressure plate is on. Now we'll get a block of our choice and build up a wall that's three high back over here. You want the block that is right above the torch to be definitely an opaque solid block. Uh, just to be sure that that redstone signal is carried through. Now we're going to take a redstone torch and put it on the side of those blocks that the redstone torch is underneath, and then those torches should turn off. Let's take a block and put it above each of those torches and put a torch on top like this. And then we're going to put another row of blocks back across over here and the rails will be on this surface right here. You may notice I don't have that kill drop anymore that I had in my old versions, and that's because villagers don't seem to be able to gossip across cells if you're punching them or killing them. And so that really simplifies this version a lot and makes it a lot easier, a lot more streamlined. So let's put the power rails across, or rather the activator rails across like this. They will be powered as long as nobody's there, but if someone's in the cell, then they would turn off and not allow a new villager to be, to be deposited in an occupied cell. Uh, let's put the power rails alongside. You can intersperse it with some regular rails if you like, if you want to save on gold, as long as that cart can carry the villager all the way on through. And then we'll power those power rails with levers back here. There we go. Now let's fill in the sides, the walls over here, again with whatever block of your choice you'd like to use, like this. And then we can fill in the top part like this, leaving that hole for them to fall through in the front. At this point I like to take a trapdoor and just put it up against the bottom of these blocks like so. If you want, you know, you could put the trapdoor like this, um, you know, or a half slab, but this kind of leaves the most open space to see that villager and access their trade. So I like having this right here and it holds the villager in on the pressure plate back there. And so when you do trade with them, you kind of have to butt right up against the, the workstation right here to get all that experience. Otherwise, you won't be able to get all of the experience. Okay, and one more thing I should mention. In Bedrock Edition, it seems like you need to shift the power rails and the activator rails over one to get this design to work. Um, I've just had some comments about that. So if you're working in Bedrock, be mindful of that. I am making this, however, in Java right now. So let's get some slabs to kind of spawn proof the top over here. And we'll put those like that, and then around over here like this. When you're totally done with your hall, I recommend you fill in these holes so that you know there isn't even an off chance that a zombie or something could fall in. But for now, we're gonna leave them open while we're adding villagers. Then we'll take some glass and put a row of glass against that half slab in the back. And so as villagers come in, they hit that activator rail. It's a valid place for them to pop off, even with their head stuck in the glass. It's not suffocating or hurting them. But even though they're in the glass, they can't actually move to the sides into another solid block. They can only move out the front and fall into the unoccupied cell, just how you want it. At this point, we are all set with the hall itself. All the redstone is done, it's all set up. And so let's talk about how to build that card delivery and return system from your villager holding cell. The nice thing about the new update in 1.14.3 is that villager trading halls no longer have to be 48 blocks away from a villager holding cell or breeder because of how pathfinding works, as well as the new design with the carpet. And so over here, I've set up a holding cell where you have a three by three glass area. We have a water source block over here and the water is pushing the villagers into this corner and a cart can pick them up through this diagonal gap right here. I recommend if you like to put a second holding cell up above with a piston that can pull a block and let villagers fall into this bottom holding cell. And that way any baby villagers from your breeder maybe that's that are collecting in the top cell will not be falling willy-nilly into your bottom cell and getting picked up for the trading hall system because again this only works for adult villagers. So let's get started over here. We're going to put a power rail over here and you actually want to have a solid opaque block there so that the cart can pick it up over here. We'll be able to stop here and come back. And then we're going to put a regular rail right here. And then we're going to build a kind of three high stairway like this. We're going to put another regular rail here and a power rail on the middle block, middle step right there. And then another one maybe on top right there. And then over here, we're going to come back 
and take a block out like this on this middle step and then around to the side like this and then a block down here and we'll put a redstone torch coming off of the side of this block feeding up into this block and so an impulse coming into this block with a redstone torch from a button will be what is dispensing one card at a time now over here let's extend this back say like this all the way back and then we're going to count we're going to count out one two three and off of this third block here we will do a thing like this for the cart return now let's come around put a dispenser on this block facing in to this rail right here and then we'll put sand right here and a cactus and a hopper feeding into that dispenser now we can take some power rails and feed those in like this and then what we want to do here is have a curve coming like this and then the rail coming like this and so as villagers as the cart is dispensed it picks up a villager comes back up and the villager comes here on the cart it hops off onto this curve and continues on to the trading hall dropping the villager off in an empty cell as the cart returns back empty it will come back this way and be diverted on this curve to hit the cactus fall in the hopper and fall back into the dispenser where if you push the button again it will dispense the cart to pick up a new villager now over here I'm not going to build this kind of hairpin for the cart return but I'll just show you over here so what we have is kind of a hairpin loop and then the cart return line coming back up against the curve of that loop and you can have this cart return line come under the trading hall or over it or around it however you like as long as it's coming up against hopping back onto this loop and then continuing over to hit that cactus and again if we have a villager coming this way they'll hop onto this go on the loop and continue on to the trading hall so it's a fully automated system with the carts picking up a villager one at a time as you push the button and so let's just see that all in action so this button impulse is going into that block with the torch I push it it dispenses one cart and picks up a villager and it carries them over there to this empty space and then the cart will be returned around like this you want about one power rail for every five regular rails that you have to keep that empty cart moving along and as you saw the cart hit the cactus and now it should be back right there in the dispenser great and this villager has now dropped down into this cell and is ready for profession sorting for whatever trade you like and with that I think we are all set so thank you so much for watching I hope that this trading hall helps you going forward into 1.14.3 good luck with all of your villager shenanigans and thanks again goodbye